Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're in Dallas, Texas, and we're visiting the State Texas Fair um, at the, this gigantic greenhouse here. And we're here with the head farmer here. This is Drew Demler. Hey! <laughs> and uh, we're gonna be taking a tour with him. He's gonna tell us all about his hydroponic setup here and some really special things that they're doing here that um, I've never seen at any other farm. And which is, um, they're actually donating all of the food. 100% to, of what we grow, yeah. yes sir. Uh, to local people here. There's actually a big food desert here in uh, South, Tex uh, South uh, Dallas. So we're gonna learn all about that and learn a lot more about hydroponics here with Drew. So before we get started walking around and learning more about the systems here, I'd love to know about this farm. How did it get started and uh, more about it? Perfect. So we started with pretty humble origins, if I'm honest about it. Uh, we started in 2016. We are the, the Big Tex Urban Farms. Um, we are a state fair funded project. We accept no outside money. Um, we are 100% funded by the fair itself. Um, we started with 100 of these specially made mobile planter beds that we'll see here a little bit later on. Um, all outdoors. We were not utilizing this space at all. Um, we were able to establish some important connections in 2016 in the community, which we're trying to serve. As you mentioned, we're at the heart of a, one of the worst food deserts in the, in the country. This is a pretty rough area as it is. And uh, we're, our program was designed to help out with, with that through produce donation and then also educational programs and then in other ways. Um, 2017, we were able to greatly expand, and we went from 100 of those mobile boxes to 529 at oh our biggest gosh. at our at our biggest as we got to our biggest uh, point outdoors. And then we also were able to get into hydroponics, mm -hmm. um, which we greatly expanded upon in 2018. And here we are, early 2019, and we're continuing to expand what we're doing in here. Wow, that's so cool! And what was this greenhouse used beforehand? I I see this big wood structured here. I kind of know the story. <laughs> The anomaly, we call yeah. it, the mystery. <laughs> so before we were doing hydroponics in here, um, this space was home to the model railroad garden during the State Fair of Texas. Oh, wow. I think something else that's really amazing is how many people come through this and kind of the education opportunity that this uh, greenhouse has. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing that makes us unique. We typically see in, in a better year, over two and a half million people. That's incredible. Out of those two and a half million people, we estimate between anywhere from 250 to 400,000 people will come in and visit my greenhouse. That is incredible. So we have everything from, you know, seasoned veteran farmers outdoors. Um, we're starting to get more and more people trickle in from the indoor farming world who are mm -hmm. finding out about what we're doing. But probably 90, 99% of the, the people who come through, they have no exposure to this whatsoever. So this is gonna be the first time that they're seeing hydroponics mm -hmm. and they're seeing what an indoor farming uh, operation looks like. You know, most of my systems are what are considered like somewhat commercial size. It would be difficult for a homeowner to go right. and install a deep water culture system. Mm -hmm. But I have several systems in here that would be very easy to replicate at home. And I'm always gonna have some stuff that people can take away with them, go back and replicate in their garage or That's in their fantastic. own backyard, greenhouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. We wanna have something for everybody in here. Cool, and we're gonna take a look at each one of those systems. Let's do it. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so we're standing next to one of your hydroponic systems. What, what is this one called? This is a deep water culture pond. Mm -hmm. um, this was actually our first hydroponic system. Okay. Um, so 2017, right before the fair hits, uh, I got introduced to a, a, a company that just so happens to be one of the largest hydroponic suppliers in the world. And they just so happened to be in my own backyard, a company mm. called Port Americas. Okay. Um, they had a demo greenhouse here in the Dallas area that I was able to go and visit. Mm -hmm. And I saw this system at their demo greenhouse and fell in love with it, decided this is what I wanted. So this was our system number one. This was our origin into hydroponics. Um, it's a really neat system, the way these things work. Very, very simple. Um, so we just have a big swimming pool full of water, basically. You build a frame out of just dimensional lumber, cover it with a pond liner. We fill it with water. And then we add nutrients to that. We use all, all the different a nutrient blend but mm -hmm. to give the lettuce, in this case, what it needs to grow. Mm -hmm. And then last but... Wow, look at those roots. Look at those roots. 
<laughs> Look at that root that system. Cool. I mean, that's about as good as it gets right that's there. Great. Underneath that, uh -huh. you can get a look at, that's our emitter right oh, there. So, so look how simple that is. Uh -huh. I mean, that's just PVC pipe that you could buy at the hardware store yeah. with a ball valve on the end, and you can adjust it, open and close it to control your oxygen flow to make sure you get it balanced, which uh, looking pretty, everything's looking pretty good over here right yeah. now. Yeah. So you, you got a few different types of lettuce here. What, a, yes. what kind of you get? It looks like a butterhead maybe? Or this is our this? butterhead. This is Rex, which is a variety of butterhead, which by and large is probably our most consistent performer. Okay. Um, this is a green leaf lettuce called Tropicana. Nice. Um, going on, you can see the more upright growing ones are, uh, mm -hmm. that's Salvius, which is a romaine variety. Okay. And right in front, that bright green, that's another one of our, our better all-purpose lettuces. Nice. It's a, uh, it's a summer crisp lettuce called Mir. Oh, I know that one, yeah. And it does very, very well for us. That's actually one of the more heat-tolerant lettuces. Right. Uh, yeah. Which is, believe it or not, it actually still gets really hot in here during the summer months. Yeah. We trap a lot of heat with this vaulted ceiling and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one will just keep on right on rocking right along. Well, a lot of the soil growers also grow mirror because They do. That. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I know outdoors you can actually grow it cut and come again. Yeah. Which is, we grow everything indoors whole head. Okay. But cool. outdoors it would be very, very useful like in a, as if you're a salad mix grower for sure. Yeah. Now you said it gets really hot in the summer. How are you adjusting the temperature how you control the heat we uh we do a couple of different things here um number one i'm hvac which yeah. i tell everybody it sounds so awesome but it's it has a lot of troubles number one it's mm -hmm. still very very hard to keep up with the heat level in here um again we've got a big ceiling so we trap a lot of heat in here um so it really struggles to keep up um but it definitely helps. So my HVAC, that's uh, one level of defense. Also, I have retractable shade cloth on the roof. Okay. So yeah, like, see like Jeff had that too as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're wide open right now, but usually by late May, we, we go ahead and close those up. Oh. Um, and that helps quite a bit. Yeah. And then also, uh, I'm working on, we're getting exhaust fans okay. installed right now. Oh, neat. So the idea with those, like periodically when we get to a certain temperature, those will crank up for a few minutes and suck some of that hot air out of this building. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help our air conditioners keep up to a lot better degree. Nice. So you're slowly making it more and more efficient. Yes. That's excellent. It's an uphill battle because like this was not necessarily designed to do what we're doing oh, now. I see. Um, because it was usually just, it was primarily designed to just keep fair goers cool during mm -hmm. the fair. Mm -hmm and house ornamentals. So now <laughs> using it for a different purpose, little by little, it's like you say, we're yeah. making things more efficient. Exactly. So as I mentioned, we start everything on these rock wool trays. Here, mm. let's get a closer look at that. Um, this is a sheet of rock wool. Mm -hmm. It's actually made out of a volcanic mineral that's processed and poured into a form to come out as this sheet here. Okay. Each one of these sheets holds 200 plant sites. Nice. So we start pelleted seeds, mm -hmm. um, for all of our lettuce at least, and uh, I'll plant whatever varieties we're looking for in a, in, a, in a sheet. We put them in the grow rack and then I cover them with one of these. This oh, is dome. a humidity dome. Okay. Um, typically we're going to be in a grow rack for anywhere from 14 to 17 days. Sometimes we'll push that to 18, 19, just depending on harvest days and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, and these are the real magic right here, the LEDs. Um, we run ours at least 12 hours a day. Uh -huh. When they get germinating, they're gonna be looking for that light right away. Yeah. Um, and especially in an indoor setting. So this is a, just a perfect incubator for an indoor system. Mm -hmm. um, you can even start, I, I know growers who use these to, to produce their outdoor plugs. Absolutely, um, and there's cool. Absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this is where everything starts. Life starts right here. This mm -hmm. is where all my transplants, whether it's going to my DWC tanks, uh, when we do our tomato, when we have to restart our tomatoes yeah. or our upright uh, vertical towers. This is where everything starts. Perfect. So then after that, let's get so it'll go right into these lettuce beds. Or this is what I want to check out next. Let's check out your uh, lower and lean tomatoes over here. So this is one of our newer systems. Uh, we actually started these in 2018, September of 2018, um, lean and lower tomatoes. Yeah. Still have a lot to learn. Yeah. <laughs> this was my first effort into doing this. Um, 
So as we're, I feel like we're starting to get the lettuce down. We've still got some work to do on this. Yeah, but really good. we're still still getting pretty good yields out of the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. so I'm still pretty happy. We made our own reservoirs. Uh huh. Um, which is something I, I haven't seen too many people do. So we basically recreated what we were doing with the deep water culture okay. systems, and uh. Retro fitted it to, to make a nice sized reservoir for our tomatoes. Um, then we just kind of changed up the plumbing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a real simple system. So I've got a small pump that sits at the bottom of this reservoir. You can see we're oxygenating just with very simple air stones. Nice. Um, and then controlled on a timer. Mm -hmm. We have a, the pump kicks on, it runs up through this feed line. Okay. And then just through very standard drip irrigation uh, waters our tomatoes. And what are these buckets called? These are called Dutch buckets. Nice. And as the name would suggest, this technology and these techniques were pioneered by the Dutch growers who really are kind of considered the masters of greenhouse growing. Yeah. Um, right. And yeah, the, a lot of our advancements in technology, both in the greenhouse structures themselves and growing techniques, we, we owe to them. So uh, yeah. Famous. <laughs> Which is really cool. So the way this works, the, the vines grow up uh, along these strings, uh -huh. and we train them to make a single trunk vine. Right. Um, so you'll see we go through and pinch the suckers out, uh -huh. which is all the growth that develops between the main stem and the leaf. So mm -hmm. we'll go through and pinch those out. Um, it forces all the energy to grow upright, and it also produces more flowers nice. that way, and then thus tomatoes. Perfect. So it's converting energy that it would normally spend into growing green into tomatoes instead. How tall are these? Like how, how long is one of these, these are, plants? These are probably, each one is probably at least 25 feet tall now. Wow. Um, but if you trace them from beginning to end. Yeah. So they, when they reach the top of the string, we unwind them and uh -huh. then slide each vine to the side. Got it. Um, when they reach the end of the row, we actually racetrack them and then loop them back on the other side mm -hmm. so we have this constantly flowing cycle, wow. um, which is really neat to see. So how long uh, can these tomatoes grow for before it's time to pull them out? If all goes well here in Texas, you can you can grow for 12 months at a time. You, so wow. you get a, a, a full year of production time and then it's time to start over. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, That's pretty good growing season, right? And then, you know, <laughs> by, the end of the, by the end of the season, uh -huh. Your vines could be anywhere from 40 to 60 feet long. Oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is incredible. How fun is that? So here's another hydroponic system. What is this one called? This is their, These are tower gardens right here. Okay. And this is one of the examples of a hydroponic uh, system that would be very, very easy to go home and do. Hmm. Um, you can order them online. There's even local places. Uh, Juice Plus sells them. Hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we have these. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see this is mint, yeah. so it, they, they grow a well enough plant. You know, we've done really good with the certain herbs. Uh, the mint's done well. We've done chives. We've done basil. So a lot of your herbs do pretty good. Um, we've toyed around with lettuce. I've got collard greens growing on there, so they're very versatile. So if you wanted to go home and uh, get, try your hand at hydroponics, this would be a really good thing to go with. <laughs> And you can do a lot of different things in it. You can, and so. you, you can grow multiple crops on the same tower at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So like this is one solid thing of mint, but there's no reason for that. You could do mint at the top, you could do a few collard green plants, maybe kale yeah. and some basil, you know, all at the same time. And um, something that I think that's special about hydro is be, being able to do it indoors is that if you're in a yes. winter situation where you like I'm in San Diego so I grow in the winter but sure, sure. most of the country can't do that so this right. is a way of having local food even in winter absolutely and especially yeah if you wanted to you could invest in a, in a cheap simple grow light of some sort mm -hmm. put it over the top of this thing mm -hmm. and yeah grow in your kitchen all year long yeah that's gonna be awesome right yeah. Uh, yeah I really like that aspect about hydro you know I always tell people people ask me are they expensive how much do they cost are they worth it and yeah. I'd say you know if you're the kind of person who's out buying herbs all the time hmm. I mean you know how expensive that is they are. so I mean if you're out there using your product if you're using a lot of fresh product if you're cooking a lot I think they're worth the investment so this is a grow rack very similar to the one that we use for our my plant incubator okay. But I use this for finishing whole heads and also for growing microgreens. That's one thing I really like about these flood and drain systems is their versatility. Mm -hmm. So basically the way these work, we start with a reservoir of water at the bottom 
a small pump and it sits in the reservoir and uh, you can set these up on a timer or you can do them manually it's your choice but basically when the when the pump kicks on each one of these uh, uh, flood trays gets flooded with the with the appropriate amount of water mm -hmm. and then uh, as when the pump turns off everything drains and returns right back to the reservoir uh -huh. um, so you add your nutrients to the water in the reservoir and then you you kind of get that to the the correct ratio and then you can walk away until you're ready to harvest that's really cool so the the water recirculates so yes did you tell us some one of the benefits about hydro is the water usage what, how does that work it's unbelievably more efficient versus what we have to do outdoors mm -hmm. um, so two things about it you know being able to grow indoors allows me to grow things like leafy greens year-round which i cannot do outdoors due to the temperature um, but also our resource efficiency in what we're doing hydroponically is incredibly different. To give you some idea, um, with my deep water culture systems, about once a month, we'll say on average, I have to add fresh water. Mm -hmm. Typically wow. when I do, I can top it off with the appropriate amount of water in a couple of hours mm -hmm. versus what I have to do outdoors. I typically have to water three four hours every single day yeah. during the summer Especially months right summer, yeah. yes uh -huh. absolutely so a yeah. couple hours once a month indoors mm -hmm. versus a couple hours every single day outdoors so mm -hmm. it's night and day difference the other thing I like about it is we're never putting uh, nutrients into the aquifer here there's no right. runoff in this right. so the fertilizer that we're adding the amendments that we're adding to our ponds or to our reservoirs doesn't go out into the environment at all um, so I like that too because I mean even in organic farming um, you do have to be very careful that you're not introducing too much nitrates right through runoff and whatnot that that can still get into our waterways which in here is never gonna happen which is nice I like that yeah that's a great point yeah there's like there's disadvantages and advantages to every type of growing of course thing. it's really cool that you have like, all the different types of hydroponic systems in yeah, that's one of the things that we feel like makes us most unique is that it's a place that you could go to a single facility and see all different types of, of hydroponics uh, on display. Mm -hmm. So what's this one here? What's this called? Okay, this is NFT or nutrient film technique. Uh -huh. um, and it's a little different than the other systems. I actually made this in about two hours. <laughs> wow. um, it's just a very, very simple construction. Anyone could go home and do the same thing. Um, and that's that's the reason I wanted this in. This is uh, one that is is pretty scalable. You can do small scale things like I have here, on up to large commercial farms um, that are full of NFT systems like Gotham Greens. You know their oh, their uh, their Brooklyn greenhouse facility is is huge, huge, huge areas of NFT. So it's a good it's a good kind of a scalable version. And here's kind of how it works very similar to what some of the other systems work. We have a reservoir of water mm -hmm. where you adjust your pH, you add your nutrients, small pump in the bottom. Um, it feeds up through a feed line. Uh -huh. Okay, so it goes all the way around the end of the channels. And here, follow me around this way. Again, this is very, very simple. I mean, this is mm -hmm. just very standard drip irrigation line. line. Yeah. It's just polyline. You can get this at Home Depot or right. whatever local hardware store you have. Mm -hmm. um, you stab in with a with a connector, uh -huh. and then you have your spaghetti line that goes to feed the channel. Right. And you'll see. Look at that. It's just a very slow and steady trickle of water. Um, and the idea is you want to flood a very thin layer of the bottom of this channel with water. Uh -huh. And the cool thing about this system and the way it works. You only flood the bottom, right? Okay. What that does, the roots are able to wick up all the moisture and the nutrients that they need, and then the upper portion of the roots stay exposed, so they're able to respirate. Oh. Um, they're able to, through, they can take in all the oxygen that they need, so it produces a very, very good growing environment. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're growing collard greens. There's a few, I think I might have one or two channels of the dinosaur kale in this. Primarily, we're growing collards. Um, which are a real popular vegetable in our area and one that we're able to get people to uh, get interested in really quickly. Um, we call this little system the uh, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> so I started these in September. 
And uh, I mean, believe it or not, I only have 10 channels in production on this small system. And we're getting between anywhere from 20, 25 pounds a week of collard greens. It's unbelievable. We'll cut them. And then a couple of days later, it'll look like we never touched them. Wow. So yeah, so we're, we, we plan on in, increasing uh, the number of NFT channels that mm -hmm. we have. In fact, this space, it's kind of right behind you. Okay. Um, we're going to get all that cleared out. And actually this week, we're going to get to work on installing a bigger system. Oh, so really? cool. next time, hopefully we'll be a little bit bigger and yeah. better. And who yeah. knows what else we're going to be up to in here. Yeah, I'm excited to come back. So something that I'm really interested in exploring in hydro is the addition of uh, biology and Absolutely. how that can increase the health and production of the plants. So um, you've been telling me that you also add inoculants. So what kind of stuff are you doing? We do. It is probably very similar inoc type inoculants to what you're using outdoors. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, hydroponics gets a bad reputation and everybody thinks it's, oh, it's, it's, it's just a sterile environment. And it's really not. Mm -hmm. um, we do inoculate all of our systems now. Mm -hmm. um, we inoculate with a with bacillus, oh, really? with some with an aquatic based bacillus, which helps colonize uh, and keep bad bacteria out. Right, exactly. Um, and we also use a product called Terabella, uh -huh. um, somewhat pricey, um, but it has a very very good mix of inoculants. There's all kinds of things that that helps. Uh, bring into the picture. If that's out of the budget, you can actually use molasses, liquid molasses, sure, sure. to inoculate. Um, and they all, it's very, very similar to what you're trying to do outside. You, you inoculate to try to, to cause a, the good bacteria mm -hmm. to bloom and go mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And as they colonize, basically, you don't leave, you outcompete the bad guys. Yes. Um, we started in that system and we saw the root zone over there. I mean, they, they look really, really good. Um, it, it, we had a little bit of brown in the root zone before we added the inoculant. Um, had a few different disease issues. Not, nothing too bad, but there were some present. But since we started inoculating, that's going away. Um, there's a couple of disease uh, root problems that are very common in, in southern hydroponics mm. due to the heat. Um, pythium is certainly one of them and uh, inoculating the the pond is just a great way to help prevent that do the I'm wondering if the microbes help stabilize like the pH maybe at all or absolutely it, does happen, or? it does help create a more stable environment for sure much like they do in soil and I see you've got your you've got your lights right here yes sir and you're doing all LED yes I'd love to know more about that technology kind of how it's a changed over time too great great so the first thing you'll notice is, is probably the color yeah um, right. these are these are a fixed spectrum uh, they call this balanced pink okay. um, which is a, a spectrum that is designed for growing leafy greens okay. um, which is primarily what we're growing in our deep water primarily what we're doing indoors um, it is a great product that is a GE Arise LED light mm -hmm. um, they're very very energy efficient and they produce a lot of horsepower. You mm. get a lot of, uh, of, of growth. You add a lot of growth um, add it by ad adding these lights. Mm. So especially in my building, um, you can look at the wall back there and see how opaque that is. Right. We get very, very poor light transmission in this building. Mm -hmm. So the addition of the supplemental light keeps us very productive in here. Mm -hmm. And what's the, you're telling me like the, the wattage of the light isn't important. What's the, what's the that, when you want to buy your lights, what are you looking for? Um, you know, you certainly need to, like everything else, cost yeah. is, is an issue. Yeah. You know, um, you want to pick the light that fits into your budget first. Um, and yeah, energy usage is important. You also want to know the light intensity, okay. which is, um, here, let's take a look at this. Uh, that's a light meter right there. Uh -huh. um, that one is a, a, comes from a company called 30 megahertz. Uh, one thing that we're really blessed because of my friendship and partnership with Hort Americas, we mm -hmm. get to use a lot of really cool fancy tech. Yeah. So that light meter uh, has a wireless uh, receiver on it which will actually go to a laptop where we can pull up and look at the light intensity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever we want to. And that tells you basically what your runtime needs to be. Hmm. So that way we're able to program on a timer when to run these lights, the, the optimum time to run these lights. Mm -hmm. So the more automated we can get in here, especially since I have a small staff, mm -hmm. um, 
the better our grow is going to be. Uh, I love seeing all the different automated systems. For sure. It's so easy and, you know, you're just pumping out the production really, you know, consistently and yes. on time. And that's, I think that's another benefit of, of Hydro as well. For sure. Yeah, yeah. A, a consistent production and especially with us where we're trying to feed people, you mm -hmm. know, and, and people are depending on getting that that crop, you know, week in, week out, and it helps so much. How many how many pounds of food are you guys growing and donating right now? Okay, so in 2017, that was our first year to tabulate the, the poundage. So in 2017, and mostly outdoors most of the year, we donated, we grew and donated a little over 2,700 pounds of produce. Wow, very cool. So in 2018, um, when we started getting into hydroponics and got mm -hmm. this system and some of the others online, mm -hmm. that number jumped over 12,000 pounds of produce. Wow, 10 times. 10 times as much. And here we are, it's early February, mm -hmm. and we're already closing in on 2,000 pounds of produce already. So nice. I'm anxious to see what that number can look like once we add our additional systems and see where we can, what we can crank out in 2019. Wow, that's fantastic. Feeding a lot of people. Getting a lot of food on plates, that's healthy fantastic. healthy vegetables, that's what it's all about, right? Yep. So what's this system? It looks, it looks, looks like, is it soil or is it hydro also? What is this thing? No, this is just actually just a good old fashioned, just a raised planter bed. Cool. Um, I wanted to do some soil inside this greenhouse because I know that's another technique that a lot of people do, right? A mm -hmm. lot of people still mm -hmm. just use soil inside of their greenhouse or inside of their, their hoop house or their high tunnels. Uh -huh. um, so we wanted to be able to demonstrate that too. Also, it does give us a chance to kind of demonstrate side-by-side -side growth rates versus what we do, what can be done in hydroponics versus soil. Interesting. Um, also, it gives us a chance to experiment with growing different root crops indoors. You know, you can't really do a lot of root crop vegetables in the hydroponic systems. Right. Um, they're just, it's just not the most efficient use of that space. But in the soil, it gives us a chance to do some of those. So. I think it can, can really help out our onion production. Mm. Um, I plan on doing some sweet potatoes in here, probably some radishes as we move into spring months. So yeah, it just gives us a chance to again, demonstrate something else in here that anyone could go home and do. Yeah, it's fantastic for all your guests. You know, they get to see a, a wide variety of ways of gardening. And yeah, that, that's a big goal of mine is to try and show off as much as I can. So one of the other Proj big projects that you have going on with yeah. the State Fair of Texas is these mobile gardens. And I've never heard of this concept before, and it, it's really fantastic, I think, what you guys have done. Yeah, you know, we think we're the only mobile garden in the in the United States. We'd love huh. for somebody to step up and challenge that sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty neat concept. So we kind of modeled after Soul Foods in, in Vancouver. Uh -huh. um, but we kind of modified what they were doing with their gardens. Uh, made it fit what we needed here. Mm -hmm. So you can see we start with a pallet. Okay. Uh, just a simple shipping pallet, right? Mm -hmm. And we take this uh, mesh liner that we literally just staple on top of the pallet. So yeah, it looks like a like almost like a landscape fabric. Exactly, or something. it's very similar to a landscape fabric. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's actually old signage material that we used to hang on our fences during the fair. Oh, cool. So you reuse the material. So we're recycling. Good. So it became a giant recycling project. But Fantastic. we tell people uh. If you wanted to do this at home, something very similar would be like screen door material oh, okay. um, would, would be great for this for this purpose. So it's porous, it allows good drainage. Um, the reason we start with a pallet is we need mobility. So we used to grow on the south side of the Cotton Bowl next to our administrative building. That was kind of our home base. Mm -hmm. Well, when events would come and then certainly when the state fair would come around, that spot was home to uh, food booths and a giant shopping pavilion tent. So guess what? Mm -hmm. My farm had to move. <laughs> so the pallet allows us to literally pick these boxes up, load them on a trailer, pull them wherever they needed to go. Well, that mobility kind of allowed us to do something else really cool with the boxes. Uh, at one point in time, we grew to 529 of these outdoor boxes. Incredible. We had three quarters of an acre in production. Wow. To be honest with you, it was more than we could handle. Yeah. Um, what we quickly realized though, because of the mobility, it allowed us to go out into the community, into South Dallas, and help multiple other organizations start gardens of their own. Cool. So we literally would just load these dudes up on a flatbed trailer, um, or empty them out, load them up into to our Sprinter van, take them to another location, 
very, very quickly set up a garden. So like um, I say, we have a pallet that starts at the bottom, and then we have these custom-made uh, collars. Okay. So all you do is you take the collars, fold them open, set them down on top of the pallet, and then if you're like these, these are double layer high, we're going to go on the carrots. Yep. Um, you just take your second one, put it right down on top, oh. fill it with soil, and you've got an Insta garden. Wow. You don't need to do any prep work, no tilling, no you know sod removal or anything. You can just set this system up and in a matter of an hour or so have you a nice sized garden. Okay, so this is the outdoor section of the Big Tex Urban Farms. So the first thing you'll probably notice, that's uh, that's one of the State Fair of Texas' biggest icons. Wow, that's, that's a big the, Ferris wheel. The Texas Star Ferris wheel. So yeah, this is the boxes. Uh -huh. You'll see, um, we have everything we're expecting to freeze. It's mid-February, early mid-February here when we're filming. We're gonna get close to freezing tonight. So I have everything covered with row covers, mm -hmm. but I have nothing but beautiful plants under there, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a peek. We'll take a peek. <laughs> so yeah, so we grow a little bit of everything outside. Mm -hmm. I uh, I just got through planting a couple thousand onion slips. Nice. Um, this is fig trees. It's of course are dormant this time of year. I've got broccoli growing. I've got more collard greens. Mm -hmm. Uh, rainbow chard, which is I think underneath here. Let's see. Let's. Uh yeah. There it there is. They are. Ah, it looks great. So it got down to like, I think it was 25, 26 degrees the other night. Mm -hmm. So I used this Agrabon row cover yep. uh, to keep yep. everybody happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, this is something that we do. I just, it's a yeah. simple piece of PVC pipe that oh. we just stab into the soil and develop a hoop. Perfect, nice um, cheap hoop. Which I think that's uh, that's part of farm, certainly part of farming yeah. and even part of gardening, I think is just taking advantage of whatever material you have and making it yeah. work. Absolutely. So yeah, this is kind of how we, we recommend if you can, if you're able to develop that hoop, it keeps the cloth off of the uh, off of the crop. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you see, it just kind of keeps everybody he healthy and happy. Very We're cool. almost fully planted out for the season. Um, I do have a little few of the taller boxes that uh, sometime this week we'll go through and weed those out and uh, plant potatoes. Ooh, and then fun. we'll be we'll be done till springtime. We'll be done till we're cropping out our winter greens, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back with things like peppers, and we'll do a few outdoor tomatoes. Nice, um, you know, and then the the usual summer spring crops: okra, black eyed peas, all those kinds of things. Oh, wonderful! Man, a lot of different varieties out here. <laughs> so, uh, so out here we 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 do everything you know, 100% organic. Um, even though we're dealing with limited soil volume. Um, you know, I mentioned this to you the other day. We kind of had to learn the hard way that we may not be the best composters in the world. So we actually bring, we had, luckily we have some really good compost companies in the area. Mm -hmm. So we top dress with compost every time we turn. And then uh, I've started adding earthworm castings oh, wonderful. last year. And man, that made our, this yeah. garden come to life. Good. That's, so yeah, that, that's, that's one thing I'd, I'd highly recommend. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to, to hear more from you about how you keep your soil healthy. All mm -hmm. your stuff looks so amazing. Yeah, worms outdoors. are a big deal. They're a big part of my, my system too. Great. Uh, they're, my, I think they're, my, they're my favorite fertilizer. Okay. I mean. <laughs> glad to hear I'm on the right track then. Yeah, those worms, man. <laughs> <laughs> they're our buddies. No doubt, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Drew, if, if people want to find out more about Big Tex and what you're doing here and they want to follow you maybe on Instagram or the, the internet, where should they follow you? Okay, first off, you can you can keep up with the with the farm and my blog on the company mm -hmm. website and that's BigTex.com. If you want to find me on Instagram, it's just my name. It's Drew Dimler, that's D-R-E-W-D-E-M-L-E-R or at Twitter at Farmer Spaceman. 